Hi, welcome to Spoiler Lab. Three student hackers start receiving cryptic messages. Trying to trace the signal, they witness strange lights and wake up in an unfamiliar hospital. According to a secret government organization, the students are now linked to an alien world and pose a threat to all of humanity. In a convenience store on the side of the road, a boy keeps failing to get his dream plush toy from a claw machine. The main character, Nick, walks past him on crutches holding takeaway coffee. Noticing the boy's unsuccessful attempts, he asks him which toy he's trying to get. Putting the coffee aside, Nick takes out a marker and draws a whole diagram right on the glass wall of the machine, which explains in detail how to get the toy the boy wants. In addition, he gives the child a dollar to bid farewell and wishes him good luck. Nick, his girlfriend Haley and their friend Jonah are on a long road trip across the southern United States, from Massachusetts to California. They are all students at MIT, which stands for Massachusetts Institute of Technology. But since Haley is goes on exchange to another university for a whole year, the boys decide to keep her company on the road. On their way, they visit many interesting places and have all kinds of fun. But Nick gets occasionally sad, reminiscing about the days when his legs used to work and he used to take his carefree runs in the woods. In the middle of the night, Nick wakes up in a motel where he and his friends decided to stay for the night. That's when he gets a strange message from a mysterious contact with the nickname Nomad. Nick carefully gets ready, quietly wakes his friend and informs him that their mysterious acquaintance has returned. Grabbing the laptop, they head to the bathroom. There, the friends write to Nomad that he greatly screwed them over when he hacked the MIT server. Since this incident was blamed on them, they are facing expulsion from the institute. The stranger makes fun of them, emphasizing that MIT is an institution for babies. Nick tells him to beware, as they will find out his identity. Suddenly, they receive a link in their email, click on it, and after a quick download process, they see a picture of themselves in the bedroom on the screen. They realize that the picture is being broadcast from a laptop webcam of Haley, who is peacefully sleeping. The surprised guys quickly turn it off, go to the bathroom and, like promising young technicians, try to expose the unknown hacker. With great excitement, they connect via Linux and try to establish the connection. When Nick asks Jonah to write some text to test it, he jokingly writes the phrase do androids dream of electric sheep. Appreciating the witty reference to the famous novel of the legendary science fiction writer Philip Dick, Nick lightheartedly calls his friend a fool, which in this context sounds more like a compliment than an insult. Then, Jonah tells Nick the addresses of the necessary servers, and they determine that the coordinates they need are in the state of Nevada. Right at this moment, Haley catches the boys by surprise and angrily reminds them that someone has to drive in the morning. On the way, Jonah's laptop receives a fresh photo of Haley's car from a traffic CCTV camera. He hands the computer to Nick, who is impressed with their nemesis. Haley notices a photo of her car on the screen and expresses her concern about this spy. She thinks the guy should stop provoking him and he will just leave them alone. She's convinced that this is just some underage prodigy who craves attention. In a small shop at the gas station, the boys discuss their situation. Nick is inclined to listen to Haley's advice, but Jonah insists on finishing what they started and putting the arrogant hacker in his place, especially since Nevada is on the way. At the next stop, Nick goes out to get coffee, leaving Haley and Jonah alone. The girl immediately asks her friend about Nick's thoughts on her move, because she feels like he's slowly becoming more distant towards her. Jonah confirms that it's not easy for Nick, but since they're both his best friends, he doesn't want to get involved in their relationship and advises her to sort things out between themselves. Then, they notice that, leaving the store, Nick falls and spills the coffee. Jonah and Haley rush to help, but Nick quietly says that he is fine and he can go get the coffee again. Haley goes after Nick and offers to help. The guy tells her quite sharply that she won't have to worry about him for much longer. Haley gets upset and decides to get some privacy on the edge of a picturesque canyon. Nick joins her and apologizes. He confesses that the disease is progressing rapidly and soon he will be confined to a wheelchair. And he finds the thought of her leaving him sooner or later unbearable. But he doesn't want to be a burden to her or for her to be with him just out of pity. Haley replies that it's not fair to blame her for something that hasn't even happened yet. Then, she begins to cry, takes off the necklace Nick gave her and throws it into the abyss. The characters continue their journey, moving in the direction of the nomad's coordinates. The boys agree that Haley shouldn't go with them and offer to drop her off first. However, the girl tells them she wants to go with them, because she wants to look at that fool, too. At night, they reach a suspicious abandoned house in the middle of the desert. After some hesitation, the boys venture into the cabin, but Haley is asked to stay in the car. When they realize that the house is empty, the friends relax a little and even try to joke around. In the basement, they find dust-covered server racks. Suddenly, they hear Haley scream from outside and rush to help her. The guys get to the car and see that all the doors are open, and the radio is randomly switching frequencies. They call Haley's name, and Nick shines a flashlight around in panic. At some point he notices her, but she suddenly flies into the air and disappears into the darkness. Then, strange lights appear, and the boys run in their direction. Nick regains consciousness from a bright light and sees people in hazmat suits around him in a blur. 
he is taken to a special office in a wheelchair. There he is visited by a doctor who introduces himself as Wallace Damon, the head of the rescue team that aims to help them. In turn, Nick introduces himself as Nicholas Eastman and immediately asks about where he is. The doctor replies that first they need to understand the situation and asks when they first received that signal. Nick doesn't understand what signal they're talking about and asks why he can't move and what happened to them. Dr. Damon says that an extraordinary thing happened, they had contact with the Ebe. Nick asks to decipher the abbreviation he's never heard before and the doctor explains that it is an extraterrestrial biological entity. Confused, Nick asks to call his parents and take him to Haley and Jonah, but Wallace says that it's impossible. Nick then wonders why they're all in hazmat suits. The doctor replies that there's a very high probability of alien contamination, so they're just making sure. After that, Nick gets a small nosebleed, but the doctor assures him he's fine and suggests talking more about it tomorrow. When Nick is left alone in the ward, he notices a strange tattoo on his wrist that looks like some kind of coat. Looking around, he realizes that he ended up in some underground research center, where he is being watched at every corner, and even the daylight outside the window is fake. When Nick is taken down the corridor again, he notices many chambers being cleaned from the aftermath of various experiments. On the way he comes across a single wall clock, but it doesn't work. All of a sudden, he notices Haley sleeping on the bed in one of the wards. Nick tries to resist and begs the staff member to let him talk to his girlfriend, but the staff member relentlessly ushers him to Dr. Damon's next session. Nick immediately asks the doctor about Haley and asks to speak to her. He answers that it is impossible at the moment. He assures him that the girl is safe, but to help her, Nick should cooperate with them. The doctor asks the boy a few simple questions like how many fingers he is holding up and if he's an earthling, but then goes back to asking about the signal. Nick asks if he's talking about the signal from Nomad and the doctor says yes. He then reveals that he first got it at MIT, when he hacked into some important servers. Then, the doctor's assistant brings a TV and Wallace interrupts Nick's story to show him something important. He turns on a video of him and Jonah walking around the abandoned house, when suddenly one of the frames shows an alien face hiding in the leaves of trees. Shocked, Nick is at a loss for words, and the doctor adds that it was not a hacker at all. Nick is once again alone in his ward. His mood makes him lose his appetite, so he throws his dinner tray on the floor. Suddenly, he hears Jonah's voice from the ventilation shaft, who tells him that he's locked somewhere. The boy also adds that he doesn't feel very well and that he's in a hurry to go somewhere. During the next meeting, the doctor forces Nick to take simple tests to determine shapes, colors and compatibility. The boy gets annoyed at the exercises, as they are much lower than his intellectual level. He is also surprised that, since he arrived here, he only saw one clock and it constantly shows half past one. Wallace replies that the clock is just broken and tells him that the reason why he doesn't want to complete the exercises is not because he's very smart, but because he's stupid and stubborn. Nick falls for this trick and performs all the tests quickly and successfully, giving scientific reasoning for his decisions. Afterwards, the annoyed boy demands to see Haley or he won't say another word. The doctor agrees and takes Nick to her room. He explains that Haley can't be talked to right now because she's in a coma. However, when she wakes up, he will be the first to see her. In his ward, Nick does some clever tinkering with cookies and medical tubes, which enable him to discover the code to the lock in the hallway through fingerprint detection. He then talks to Jonah again, who tells him that they must be infected with something. Nick is skeptical and expresses confidence that they're fine, but Jonah emphasizes that something is obviously wrong with his body and tells him to get out of here as soon as possible. Nick wants to share the code with his friend, but he complains that he can't feel his own hands and that he's in a hurry to go somewhere again. Meanwhile, the center staff conducts a strange experiment with a cow and a mysterious creature in the dark. The experiment gets out of control and, taking advantage of the chaos, Nick tries to hide in the toilet. However, the employees quickly find him and take him back to the corridor, where he notices terrible scratches on the walls. During another conversation with the doctor, Nick wants to know what happened in the hallway and what they are doing to Jonah. The boy suspects that this is all some kind of bad show using old methods. He believes that this center is probably trying out some outdated grants from World War II, which are irrelevant in this day and age. But they still pretend that they are doing something important, however it looks quite pathetic. In the heat of a moment, Nick promises that as soon as he, Haley and Jonah get out of here, they will do everything to ruin their reputation. After listening to Nick's monologue, the doctor points out that his friend Jonah is not here and never was. The guy tells him to stop lying because he is constantly communicating with him through the vent. But Wallace makes Nick doubt if it really is Jonah, since he only ever heard a voice. Then, Nick decides to finally do something and at night, under the covers, develops a detailed escape plan. During the morning checkup, the doctor doesn't find the boy in bed, 
but finds his ingenious scheme under the mattress. Meanwhile, Nick manages to kidnap Haley in her bed and bravely attempts to sneak through the crowd of wandering employees. Almost reaching the exit, he is about to enter the code when he gets captured at last. In his flashback, Nick reminisces about the happy times when he used to run through the woods and have fun with Haley at the amusement park. In his best form, he even participated in athletics competitions. Suddenly, Nick wakes up to Haley softly calling his name. He regains consciousness next to her in a brightly lit chamber. They try to hold hands, but one of the medical workers separates them. The weakened girl says that she feels much better, and she also had a good dream where Nick won a competition. Then, she falls asleep, and irritated, the boy fiercely fights the employees who attempt to restrain him. Struggling, he falls off the bed, and the workers carefully leave the ward. Lying on the floor, Nick discovers that instead of legs, he now has some kind of high-tech prosthetics. He is terrified of what he sees and begins to panic. Dr. Damon, who is watching Nick through the glass, asks him to let them insert a needle into his vein for his own safety. However, the boy doesn't listen to him and easily knocks down the front door in a fit of anger. Taking Haley with him, he takes full advantage of his new power and destroys all obstacles in his way. Aware of the boy's strength, the employees don't even try to stand in his way. By the elevator, the doctor finally catches up with Nick and advises him not to do this, since he won't be able to protect him outside the station. Having no reason to trust Dr. Damon, Nick makes his way to the underground tunnels, which he and Haley use to get out. They wander through the desert when they suddenly come across a passing car with a strange old lady, who sees angels everywhere. Reaching the nearest gas station, Nick tries to call someone for help, but the phone suspiciously doesn't work. At that moment, he sees a report on the TV about two infected patients named Nicholas Eastman and Haley Peterson, who have disappeared from a local research station. Suddenly, Nick sees Haley getting into a truck and immediately driving off in an unknown direction. The guy runs out of the cafe and tries his best to catch up with them. He quickly catches up with the truck and climbs onto the threshold of the cab, but the driver hits him with the door and throws him onto the road. Having recovered a little, Nick gets up and, like a crazy Terminator, rushes after the truck again. Realizing that this is no longer a joke, the driver frantically reaches for his gun, but Haley stops him. The main characters decide to leave the driver on the side of the road, but he yells out that they won't escape far. Nick and Haley continue their journey through the desert, but soon they come across a strange huge ditch, which cuts off the entire highway and makes their further journey impossible. Meanwhile, the search team led by Dr. Damon tries to follow the fugitive steps and finds that strange old lady. Wallace interrogates the woman about her possible contact with the fugitives. During the conversation, she unexpectedly rises into the air and it turns out that she isn't human, but rather a programmed android. In an effort to get around the canyon, Nick and Haley come across an abandoned tourist center. There they find a map of the area, but it confuses them more than it helps. Eventually, they get tired and decide to stay there for the night. While wandering around the premises, Nick and Haley stumble upon Jonah in a hazmat suit. In search of the fugitives, the special forces team led by Damon visits the truck driver's home. The doctor tries to ask the man some questions, but he tells them to get out of his house. The man is unable to answer any of Wallace's questions about the house, family, pets or their names, and begins to show unprovoked aggression. Not learning anything interesting, Damon kills the stupid android in cold blood. As Nick puts Haley to bed, he notices a strange metal implant protruding from one of her upper vertebrae, as well as a number tattoo similar to his own. Jonah explains to Nick that it isn't a serial code of a specific person, but of the zone in general, since the numbers on the tattoo are the same for everyone. He believes that they are in Area 51, because the numbers 2,3,5,41 add up to the number 51. According to him, everything around them is a part of the experiment and a complete simulation. Even the things and goods in the store are fake. Some terrible experiments are being conducted on them, like on rats. Then, Jonah reveals to Nick that instead of arms, he now has cybernetic prosthetics similar to the ones on Nick's legs. Friends decide that, in any case, they need to get out of here and when the morning comes they follow the only road that can lead them to civilization. On the way, the heroes come across a checkpoint, and Nick and Haley hide in the trunk of the truck. Dressed in a hazmat suit, Jonah pretends to be an employee and tries to explain to security that he has permission to leave. However, the guards are suspicious of him and demand him to get out of the car. Jonah accelerates abruptly, but the truck is blocked by concrete blocks. To divert attention from his friends, Jonah runs out of the car and, under fire, makes his way into the guardhouse. There he finds a laptop and tries to disable the blocks preventing the truck from moving. But suddenly a grenade flies into the room and destroys everything around. Badly injured, Jonah still regains consciousness, finds his shattered glasses and tries to get to the car, but he gets more bullets shot in the back on his way to the truck. Nick tries to help his friend, but Jonah tells him to get into the driver's seat and get away. After some consideration and nostalgic memories, Nick listens to Jonah, while Jonah himself decides to distract the enemies. He crushes concrete blocks with his super strong hands, allowing Nick and Haley to escape. 
Jonah is surrounded by soldiers on all sides, but he heroically decides to give them one last fight. With all his might, he hits the ground and a powerful shock wave destroys everything around. After some time on the road, they encounter a blockade of police cars led by Damon and a bunch of the armed special forces. Nick decides to break through the blockade and tells Haley to buckle up. The guy tries to ram them, but they suddenly throw the spikes under the wheels, which makes it much more difficult to control the truck. It ends up turning over. In the accident, Nick recalls that he and Haley had much more enjoyable rides in their lives, and when they were lying on the grass in the middle of the field, it was much more romantic than lying on the asphalt in their own pool of blood, like now. Wounded, the girl confesses her love to Nick, when a helicopter flies up to them and takes her somewhere. The guy remains lying on the road, but still gets up and looks at the helicopter that got Haley. Damon tells him there's no use in trying to catch up with it, and that he should forget about the girl altogether. The doctor thinks that Nick should focus on himself instead, because he is their great success, and the best combination of man and extraterrestrial technology. That's when Nick turns his attention to Damon's badge, which is spelled Nomad backwards. He realizes that the doctor is the mysterious hacker. Wallace admits that he is the same nomad who brought him here, but it was Nick who wanted to find him in the first place. And in all fairness, he found exactly what he was looking for. But Nick briefly walks down the memory lane again, where he sees some motivational moments with Haley. Then, he gets furious, his legs gets filled with energy and he instantly takes off, destroying everything in his path. Crossing the bridge, he suddenly breaks through an invisible virtual screen, which only imitated the surrounding landscape. Damon catches up behind him and, smiling, removes his protective mask. Now Nick realizes why all the staff, doctors and special forces were wearing masks and hazmat suits. Behind the supposedly ordinary human face, they hit a bunch of metal wires and their unearthly origin. Nick finally realizes that he is on an alien ship, and everything around is just an imitation of the Earth. Inside the technical room, where he appeared after breaking the screen, he sees the familiar numbers 2, 3, 5, 41, while a huge spaceship moves through the endless universe. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below and if you liked the video please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.